welcome to Connection Church. My name is Avery and I'm so glad that you're joining us today. If it's your first time hearing about Connection, head over to our social media pages and our website to find out more about who we are and what we're all about. If you're not new here though, you know that we're in the middle of our summer series right now, which is all about the armor of God. It's been a great series and there's still a lot more to come. Before we get started though, there's just a couple of things I wanna let you know about. If you were around last Sunday, we had our first Celebration Sunday, and I'm sure a lot of you would agree that it was a great time, there was awesome food, beautiful weather, and it was nice to finally be able to meet together in person. Um, our next Celebration Sunday is happening on August 29th, and that is a baptism-focused Sunday. If you have any questions about that or would like to get baptized, shoot us a message on our social media or send an email to info at connectionwindsor.com. Secondly, our kids program launches today, which is awesome. So if you are a parent of a preschooler or an elementary student, um, in this video actually, in the description, you can just click on the link or head over to our website and it'll take you to our very own Connection Kids YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, that's it for me now. Um, I will see you after the message. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Steve, and I'm so excited that you've caught us in the middle of our summer series. We're looking at the armor of God out of Ephesians 6. We hope you've had a great week, and uh, whatever day this finds you on, whether it's a Sunday or a Tuesday or some other day, uh, we're just glad that you are taking the time to watch this message with us, and hopefully you have the chance to lean in with the group as well. Hey, so we're looking at not only the way that we can survive and just like exist through battles, but scripture tells us that we can be able to stand firm and stand confidently through battles and through the tension that we walk through on a daily seasonal basis. Because it just, do you go through those times where you just feel like it doesn't stop? The, the challenges, the, the tensions, the, the battles. So any chance that we have to find out how we can best get through it, man, I wanna know. I wanna know all about it, absolutely. So this week, as we continue, we're looking at the shield, uh, the shield of faith as scripture talks about. So we're gonna read through this section. Uh, again, this is out of Ephesians 6. What's gonna pop up on the screen is the New Living Translation. And, uh, and we'll take a look at it. Here we go. So this is Paul, a um, guy who's written a, a bunch of the New Testament. Um, and this is a letter. It's a letter to a church in, in a town. So he's just encouraging, challenging people, and, and passing on what God wants to say to a group of his people, ultimately us as well. So let's take a look. Verse 10, a final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. There's that reminder that our, our issue isn't ultimately with the people and the situations around us that, that someone's pulling the strings. And he says this right here but our battle, but it's against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor, so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Okay, before we jump in, let's pray. God, thank you again 
for who you are. God, thanks for this time. Thank you for your word that that we have that gives us a glimpse uh, of who you are. It gives us a glimpse of who you say we are. And God, there's so much in it that while it's while it's an ancient text, it's so applicable to our here and now. So no matter what week we've just come out of or what week we're heading into, may we be present just in this moment to hear from you, God, what you want to speak to us about how we can best arm ourselves for this battle that we, fight, that we face, that we fight, from our enemy. So God, thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your patience with us and help us in these next few minutes to just listen to you. So thanks in Jesus name. Amen. So um, I was in youth ministry for a number of years and this one stretch of youth ministry, we were in London. We were at a church in London. And through conversation with some of the leaders there, we came up with this idea for some of the nights, every once in a while, we would, we would make and pull out the things that we'd already made, these foam weapons, these foam swords, and um, just different weapons that we would make with, with the students. And so we would essentially take like a pool noodle and lots of duct tape um, for for swords and things like that. And it was a ton of fun, man. When we first brought these things out, and and we just had we just, we had a blast. We had a blast with the students. Um, and listen, just for a second here, like adults, don't pretend like you're above this because we saw a number of you at Celebration Sunday with that massive pinata. And let me tell you, when you took that bat we saw the smile in you so you're not above this um there's something there there's something about a battle that that i know is in the heart of like lots of little boys lots of older boys <laughs> uh lots of people it's it's this i don't know whether we resonate with the fact that so much of life seems to be a, to be a fight and we want to win we want, we want to be champions. And I think, I think it actually maybe resonates with something within us that says we are victors. When we're part of God's family, uh, we are victors. Anyways, in, with all these weapons that we made, we have these like long, long, heavy, like two-handed sword things that just kind of took all of some of the students to lift and swing around. They were fantastic. We had a couple of shields that, uh, that were made, but these were made out of wood. So they weren't just foam shields. These were made out of wood. And one of them was this kind of larger shield, and it was literally made out of like deck boards, like pressure treated deck boards because if whoever made it it was just whatever wood they had laying around it was heavy it was it was very heavy and we actually had to be really careful with it because a couple of the students would hold it up high and if if it got hit you know we didn't want kids losing teeth or anything like that but man these shields definitely despite them being cumbersome at times man they just they provided great protection and so as we look at the shield of faith, um, it's one thing that just comes into my mind, this time where we, we had these shields, we used these shields. So may, maybe you have a childhood where, I don't know, you, you played with toy weapons and things like that, and, you, and this resonates with something in you as well. But as we look back at verse 16, as we look back at verse 16, Paul is talking about the shield of faith. So he's saying, in addition to all of these, so in addition to the things that he's mentioned just previously, he says, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows 
of the devil. In another translation, it says, it says this, always carry the shield of trust with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So interesting. So as we just kind of like look at the different parts of this verse, it's interesting. It starts with, starts with hold up, right? Hold up the shield of faith. In other words, get it into position. The, the Greek word here is really fun. Ana lambano. I mean, you should just try. You should just try. Say that. Say that once to yourself. Say, even say it out loud. If you're sitting with some people, Anna Lombano. It just, I don't know. It has this nice, it has this nice ring to it. I just want to say hold up in Greek uh, just way more often. But it means to take up or to rise. And so there's this action. It's not just make sure you have it with you. It's bring it up into engagement. So hold up the shield of faith. So the shield that, again, commonly looked at in this section is from the Roman uh, sort of armament. And so it's called a scutum, or a lot of people would look at it and say, oh, that's a, that's a tower shield. And it would be like four feet high by two and a half feet wide. This was a significant piece of equipment. Now it would be made of wood, two different layers of wood, also covered in a stretched hide. And, and before battle, if, if they were going right into battle, they would often, if able to, they would soak the shields so that if arrows, fire arrows were coming at them, the, the wet shield would put out the flame all the quicker. These shields were painted usually with identifying marks of, of who the army was, who they belonged to. And another defining characteristic of these shields is they weren't flat. They were curved on the edges so that they would almost look like they were starting to envelop the person who's holding them. That's interesting. The shield of faith. We look in Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11.1 1 in the ESV says this. Now faith, faith is the assurance of the things hoped for. It's the conviction of things not seen. This presents this really odd picture in one sense, right? Because again, this battle... That, that Paul is talking to us about is like, hey, the tension and the challenges you face in life, so many of them, they're not actually with the people and the, in the environment you see before you. There's this, this great enemy that we have that's pulling the strings. And so because it's an unseen battle, you can't use the things of this world to fight this battle. And so this is where this list of things is coming from. And we're on the shield of faith. And so it's, a, it's an interesting picture to say, hold up this defensive piece of equipment that is faith. And you start to think about this and you think, okay, I need, I need to hold up my faith. What, what is that? What, what does that even look like? Because it can get confusing thinking about truth and faith. Like what would be the difference between truth and faith? Because if someone says, what's your faith all about? You might start to describe things that we would find in the Bible, which is what we would say is the truth. Truth tells me that God will provide. My faith reminds me of how he's provided. Truth tells me of what I believe. My faith not only includes what I believe, but why I believe it. Faith, if you think of it this way, faith is my 
personal vehicle in which I transport the truth. It's where, it's where truth becomes personal. The truth being something that anyone can look to and start to believe in as they enter into a relationship with God. But as that relationship grows, a faith grows, a personal faith that starts to add our own sort of skin in the game. Truth tells me of what is to come. My faith is the personal conviction of believing that the truth is true, that of what is to, be, what is to come. Because I look at my personal experiences and therefore believe more of the truth. In Romans 4, 18, it says this, even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. You see, Abraham had a personal experience with God that fueled his faith. Abraham didn't just read somewhere that if you're obedient, you'll be blessed. He had a personal experience with God that fueled his faith. And so this is, this is as we start to look into this, we can see that the shield of faith kind of starts to take shape. We're not just holding up a generic shield of truth. We're holding up a shield of faith that is very personal. And we'll dip into that a little bit more in a few minutes. So as the verse continues, it speaks of the fiery arrows. So interesting that, th that this is the sort of attack that's described. When you, when you think of arrows, when you've seen movies, um, it's a really kind of scary thing to try and defend against because you're not just usually looking at one arrow that's clearly obvious and easy to defend against. Arrows pierce. They're, they're also small and can, and can get into tight spaces. And isn't this true of our enemy's attacks? It can come out of nowhere. The slightest vulnerability, it seems that sometimes our enemy knows about. He exploits even the smallest weakness, the smallest opportunity. And so the idea of an, of an arrow is, is a great, great thing for imagery. Why fiery, though? This hit me. I thought, why, why is Paul describing it? As, as the fiery arrows of the evil one. Fire spreads. And what they have to be careful of is if these fiery arrows hit the shields and they didn't go out, they could spread. The fire would spread. And so what was initially a single attack, an isolated incident, if unaddressed, can spread. And that is so like satan's attacks on us as well a little bit of anger a little bit of frustration a little bit of temptation can get in there and can spread like wildfire in our lives if if unaddressed so specifically i mean what are these fiery arrows these attacks of satan can look like all kinds of things they can be fear maybe Maybe you've experienced that. Maybe fear is something so central to, to who you are and, who's, and how it's defined how you respond and react to things. Fear can be an attack of the enemy. And, and just like the fiery side of things, it can spread. Anger, temptation, doubt. Most if not all of the attacks of our enemy against us are to sow seeds of doubt. 
you look at fear. An attack of fear on us can cause us to start to think things like, does God really protect me? You know, is my future secure in God? Does he really love me? Do, do I have acceptance among this group of people? I mean, fear can just spread so quickly and cause doubt in so many areas. You look at anger. Anger can cause us to doubt, well, do I have any self-control at all? Temptation. Temptation can also lead to the same thing of, do I have any self-control? Does God have any strength in me that can help me with these things? Is God powerful enough to help me overcome the things that I'm battling? It causes us to doubt His word. Sometimes it causes us to doubt His ways or even that Jesus is the only way. There's so many attacks that Satan, our enemy, can send through that ultimately are causing doubt in us. Maybe even just the idea of salvation. Am I really saved? Am I eternally saved? Can I, can I screw that up? Can I wreck my, my security with God? Satan is all about causing doubt. So as our verse continues, right, it says of the fiery arrows of the devil or of the evil one. 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9 says this, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. It says, stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. Listen, the end of this verse is so important to what we're looking at here. One, you are not experiencing anything that is completely unique to you. And I don't want that to be offensive to you. I'm not trying to diminish the attacks or the challenges or the battles that you have or are facing. But there's something to know that we're not alone. That someone somewhere, maybe close by, has walked through generally what you are walking through. And they've made it. It's another arrow of doubt that Satan wants to put in our minds is that we can't make it through this. You know, we're not going to make it through it. The other side to that finishing sentence of the family of believers is that this idea of these shields that we're looking at in the Roman army, they were always stronger together. Absolutely always stronger together. It underlines why it's so important that we stay in community. It's why it's a huge focus for us at Connection, building faith and community one life at a time. So so what is it to, to raise your shield of faith? Remember we talked about off the top, that really fun Greek word, do you remember it? Anna Lombano, so good. What is it, this act of raising your shield of faith. So it's to engage it, right? Again, it's not enough to just have it with you. It's not the body armor that you just strap on and you forget it. It's something you actually have to make the choice to engage in. Is your faith engaged or is it in storage? Because sometimes we can go through seasons where It's so busy or there's so many things to take care of. It's so stressful or we have all kinds of other things that are calling for our attention that faith or or spiritual things just seem to be a different segment of life. Okay, we have these faith-based things that I do on these days or at these times and then I'm off to do all the rest of the things in my life that aren't spiritual. Is that even a thing or is that an attack from our enemy? 
to cause us to believe that maybe that there's a separation between spiritual and unspiritual things. I would say that there isn't. And it's all the reason that we should have our faith, our shield of faith with us all the time. That it's engaged, that we're ready. Because if we're not using a shield of faith, how on earth are we handling the attacks of of the enemy? We're essentially standing out on a battlefield, knowing that arrows, attacks are coming. I don't know, hoping for the best, right? Is it the, is it the bury our head in the sand type thing? Is it explain it away with other things? I mean, you catch an arrow in the arm and you're just in complete denial. Oh no, like I probably just pulled a muscle. Like what are we, what are we doing if we're not actively defending against the attacks of the enemy? We have this saying, I don't, I don't know where we heard it. It's not original to our family, but we've talked about it lots in youth ministry and in our family and just in life in general. And it's this, don't complain about what you permit. I mean, if you are actively allowing something to take place, don't complain about it, right? I don't, again, I don't want to diminish the battles and the challenges you are facing. But if we're not going to invoke and use and engage the very thing that God has said, hey, this, this can extinguish all of the attacks of Satan. If we're not going to, if we're not even going to pick it up, or we're going to say, yeah, I've got one of those and it's, uh, it's in a safe place. It's brand new. It's uh, beautiful. It's in perfect condition then what are we doing? We can't complain about, about the attacks of the enemy if we're not willing to defend ourselves against it. And so the other question that pops in my head with all this is how does our faith, how does our faith extinguish the flaming arrows of our enemy? Again, we mentioned Satan's attacks are always trying to alter our beliefs. What I believe about God what I believe about myself, what I believe about life. Again, our faith is made up of what we believe about God, which spills over into what we believe about ourselves, like our worth, our abilities, our past and our future, and also what we believe about life, its purpose, our hope while here, our potential for impacting others, So this is how, when we look at those things, our belief in who God is, our our wrestle in maybe discovering what that is, in owning that, right? It becoming personal can start to extinguish the arrows of the enemy when he tries to cause us doubt. An attack comes in that says, is God really all powerful? Because you just screwed up again. I mean, that can cause some serious doubts if we're like, well, I mean, I prayed about God, about asking God to help me, and I, and I fell again. I made a mistake again. So maybe God isn't who he says he is. Well, our personal experiences with God, as we look back, should go to show that he's faithful. We're the ones that are flawed. We're the ones that are more selfish in our desires, more, more willing to, to budge on things. We, we give an inch and then realize we've actually given a mile. So our experiences with God are the things that will fuel our faith and cause it to be, cause it to be something that can extinguish these arrows, these attacks of the evil one on us. And let's, let's not forget, it's not, Paul doesn't mention, hey, hide behind the wall of faith. Although large, the shield of a Roman soldier was meant to be mobile. They carried it with them because attacks can come from all directions. And notice that Paul doesn't say, 
and just pray. Pray that the enemy won't fire any arrows at you. He says you need to actively take up a shield of faith to extinguish all the attacks of the enemy. You see, the greater our faith experiences are with God, the greater our shield of faith becomes. It covers more of us and can withstand more attacks. So do you have a shield of faith? Maybe it needs dusting off or maybe it's, maybe it's just being formed. Either way, we need to realize that God is constantly looking to increase our faith for many reasons. One of them, one of them being so that we can extinguish the fiery arrows of our enemy. God looks to use challenging times. He looks to use our mistakes, wounds that we've endured, failures that we've even jumped headlong into. He's looking to redeem them, all to increase our trust in Him, of who He is, of what He will do, what He's capable of, and also what is to come. So this week, may we lean more into our pursuit of God, that we would look to our experiences with Him, that we would see that He's with us in all things, and everything is an opportunity to grow our shield of faith that ends up being the very thing to protect us from the attacks of the enemy who is so deceitful and is looking to steal, kill, and destroy. May we put our shield of faith to good use this week. Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you that you're patient with us because, God, I know, I know your word says that you are with us and that you are a God of redemption. You are a God of purpose. And so, God, you're looking to use everything in our lives to show us who uh, who you are, how good you are, how much you love us, how much you pursue us. All these things can increase our faith. So God, help us to pick up that shield. Help us to grow our faith, God, to be looking to see where you are and what you're up to and how you're leaning into our lives, that our shield of faith would grow in strength and in size, God, so that we would be vigilant, that we would not be okay with just standing there taking the attacks of the enemy because they pierce and those fiery arrows spread. And God, when we, when we realize, when we own our faith, I think we get to a point of wanting to know how we can thank you for all that you've done. And the best way to do that is to offer our lives back to you, God, every area of our lives, and that we would be unwilling to put down any of this armor, but the reverse would be, would be true, that we would pick every bit of it up because we want to do what we can to protect what you have paid so much for, and that is our lives. God, for anyone who hasn't made that decision yet, God, I I pray that today would be the day that they would stop trying to do things their own way, that they would see just how much, God, you love them and that you're pursuing them and all that you've done for them. God, may in this moment, may they say yes. They believe not because they have all the answers, but God, they believe who you are, Jesus, that you died for them, that you rose again, paying the penalty for sin, conquering death, and securing forever their eternity with you, giving us hope and purpose for now, God, while we're here on this earth. Thanks for loving us, God. Thanks again for this time. And may we realize just how great you are. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Have an awesome week and we'll see you soon. All right, thanks again for joining us today. Hopefully you're headed into a home church group right now. If you are not yet in a group and you are interested and you live in the area, please get in touch with us via social media or email and we'd love to hook you up with a group. If you are interested in partnering with Connection Church financially, um, that info for giving will be coming up on the screen next. All right, that's it for me. Have a great week.